Glenn Pugh for avweb.com. At Carlsbad, California's Palomar Airport, we caught up with the Collings Foundation Wings of Freedom Tour. Here's Derek Ward with more. The Collings Foundation is a nonprofit educational foundation dedicated to living history events. We currently travel the country 10 months out of the year, seven days a week to about 110 cities with the three aircraft, the B-24, the B-17, and the P-51. Behind me is the uh, B-24 Liberator. Over 18,000 of these were produced during the war from 1941 to 1945, the most widely produced bomber in world history. Today, you're looking at the only B-24 bomber that still flies. There's about 10 airframes in the world. Uh, LB-30, which is a cargo version, uh, that one flies, and then the rest are all in museums. The B-24 behind me actually started out as part of the Lend-Lease program, built in 1944, given to the RAF, and it's, this aircraft actually did combat missions over uh, India, resupply and anti-shipping missions. The only reason why it exists today is the RAF left it in India when they pulled out. All the other aircraft that came back to the States all got recycled used and used for scrap. It's powered by four R1830 radial engines putting out 1,200 horsepower. Our takeoff setting, we use about 44 inches of manifold pressure, 2,700 RPM. Each engine's got 26 gallons worth of oil. We also have uh, 28 spark plugs per engine. There's 14 cylinders, so each cylinder's got two spark plugs, so that's a long change for uh, getting spark plugs changed. We burn about 50 gallons an hour per engine. So 200 gallons an hour roughly on our, just our local flights. We can legally consume two gallons of oil per hour per engine. It's also got the Davis wing. The Davis wing was uh, revolutionary and it enabled the aircraft to fly faster, also get a little bit further range because of the faster speed, and carry a little bit more. Uh, that's where it differed from the B-17. As a result, the B-24 was stationed further out. It was based out of Italy, it was based out of uh, Africa, and also out in the Pacific. It flew all over in all the different theaters of, of combat. The uh, Crew of 10, if we start back uh, right behind me here, nose gunner, bombardier, Navigator, all sitting up front. Then the uh, pilot, co-pilot, right behind them was the radio man. There's also a flight engineer who did the top turret. Then you have two waste gunners. The belly gunner, which you can't see, under, it's, it retracts because it's a nose wheel aircraft. And it would hit the ground every time you landed or rotated. And then you've got the, uh, the tail gun. So uh, pretty wide crew, uh, a pretty varied crew, lots of specialized positions. And that's a crew of 10 to maybe drop 8,000 pounds. So pretty astounding. You send up 300 airplanes beginning of the war, you have 100 of them don't come back, 1,000 men. So what that generation went through, what they did, you're looking at 28,000 feet, minus 30, minus 40, minus 50 degrees. Bombay doors are open, the wind's blowing through there. The aircraft, the B-24, had some vulnerable points. If you were a German fighter pilot and you had done your homework, you knew that the bomb bay was a very uh, a good target. The, few, the wing joins inside the bomb bay. There's fuel all through that, so that's right up on the top there. The whole right side of the bomb bay is the primary hydraulics. This is a very hydraulic-driven airplane. Flaps, brakes, gear. All that's run off hydraulics. If you hit that, you're, the aircraft's going to have some issues as well. Okay. 18,000 built in a, a period of about three and a half years. You're looking at well over 10 per day. Uh, just an astounding number of airplanes built. Not only people come out to see the airplane, they get to talk with the veterans, uh, hear the stories firsthand. It's one thing for me to tell you about it, a whole other thing to, to hear the veterans and the people that work directly with who built the airplanes, who flew the airplanes, who saw the airplanes overhead. Uh, really amazing to hear their stories firsthand. Uh, it's, a, it's a precious piece of history, a precious piece of history you don't want to forget.